Should be over there. Some of you that run deer planters might know that they got an excessive warning system on some of their monitor warnings. And so for all the all you older folks that uh, remember how to quiet that speaker down a little bit, that's what I'm doing right now. if that makes a difference. Might put another layer. Take two. That's still louder than crap. Oh well, here we go. never know how good the camera picks this up, but there's a nice green hue across the field now. That was actually one of the first fields we planted that was in that really hard ground. I kind of got my butt ream for maybe not a good job planting, but it looks good now, so I lucked out. excessive for that warning. Oh, yeah. Not sure what happened there. It wasn't my fault. At least I don't think it was. show you what's kind of stunk about this replant you probably can't see but right here there's not much at all and then you get a row here too that really wasn't affected at all because it was cleared it wasn't touching the uh, residue so I guess I better clear up since it's been a little while for me but it's only been like three minutes here on this video for you guys what I was trying to do with this video but we're replanting some of our soybeans we got frost damage and it's typically been the beans that have been touching the residue that had a little more residue around them it got colder around those beans like you can see a pivot track here they're fine but when you get into residue it's just a touch colder enough that it it smoked them so we're out here kind of filling it in and the trick is trying to figure out what to plant it at because you get spots that are totally fine and then you get spots that are untouched and if this was corn you would just come out here disc it up or or tear it out somehow 
and restart over because corn is sensitive to population. If you put too much, it's going to act like a weed and be stressed. Where beans, they just adapt to any population almost. So that's kind of why we're not tearing this up. We're just filling it in. So right now we're dropping 100 just because these light spots are pretty thin and then you get to these good spots that are pretty good and I don't know, that seems to be kind of the happy medium in this field. But we've kind of changed all over the place, kind of wherever it works best. So we'll see. quarter biggest thing I like to make sure is it's pushing it in between kind of where you cross that old row like right here there's that old rib ball now inevitably inevitably now inevitably you'll be you'll always have one there's another earthworm We got earthworms all over the place. He was covered, covered. So yeah, that that looks satisfactory for crossing that old trench. Woo. See, this is what would happen. You got some that are froze off, some that are beautiful. these completely completely dead ones stinks just in case if I wasn't sure I wanted to clean my tractor off so here's the dilemma I got these squalls coming through I'm where the blue dot is. So it's borderline now and it looks like they could be lining up to just keep kind of whacking me. Probably won't amount to much rain, but enough to just make a mess out of everything. So I may, uh, just wait this out a little bit. Because if I get one more like that, guy, I'll be done. Go ahead. Well, I'm not. I mean, I could still go a little bit, but I might quit because it looks like they're kind of lining up. say though we had some guys ceramic the windows on these and it it sheeted off a lot nicer I, I don't know if you can tell that usually kind of clings a little bit more but maybe that was worth it It's one of those decisions you don't like to call because you're like, 
I could probably start going again. But this could develop and just rain me back out and just keep hammering me. So where we don't absolutely have to, we could probably finish it tomorrow if it doesn't rain much. We'll probably go with that. So we'll wait for Tom. I think him and his wife had a Memorial Day service thing or something. Not sure. That's why he's late to the party. Even though he did it all weekend and I didn't. Yeah, they just kind of keep rolling through. I don't know how much we've gotten so far. So far, but we'll see what morning brings, I guess. Kids and their music. Might have been me. Well, let's see what morning brings. You have it set up so one's one. Two, okay. Uh, you might go at, like at point five over the first one. It's a long way. Oh, okay. Number one is the roundup. One roundup, two. Yeah, two was, was the water. Yeah, two. Well, they all had water, bro. Oh. So that's how that auto batch system works. So what John's gonna do is he's gonna, we got some borders that are getting hairy, but the rest of the fields are kind of fine. And so I better put on my belt, shouldn't I folks? So he's gonna go around and spray these borders, try to kind of clean them up because in a, week or two weeks we're going to be coming back with our post spray program with the residuals and the other stuff kind of do a full rate across the whole fields before the corn canopies and hopefully that after the corn canopies and the soybeans canopy that they will shade the row enough that you know you don't have to go back out there and spray it much anymore that's kind of what happens on the spray program around here but he's going to take it down south He's got to go load up his truck with water after that. So I'm going to pick him up, bring him back to his truck, and then I'm going to go back down and plant. Let's go play some farming. Fire everything back up again. And we're off again. Tom's over the hill there. Yeah. It's just kind of sad. You get gaps. Good, good. Decent gaps. Gaps. Good. Decent gaps. Especially, you can see where the residue was. Just nothing. Well, I ran out. Tom's over there. He's He's got seed left. Um, we don't have much left over where I am. So instead of me trying to guess on how much seed to put back in, since it won't take long, he'll finish it out. That way we're just trying to clean out one planter. Mine's cleaned out. We got the most important crop left to put in. We got sweet corn to put in. 
So I will take my planter back. We'll put the corn discs in, corn bowls, whatever, and uh, put that in. It's kind of late. Kind of concerned. It's going to be a little longer for me to get some sweet corn in in my belly. Looks like the swath control was working good on the planter. Goes John Bun. gonna swap her over here. In case for those of you wondering how confident we are in using Roundup on our stuff, especially our field corn, which you don't really eat directly. Well, this is gonna be our sweet corn. Tastes great, and we've been using it for three or four years. Haters gonna hate though. You can see we just fill it in these little mini hoppers here. It doesn't take very much at all, but you can just slide these back and shovel a little bit in there. I'm not sure why we don't have this in the system as most important field in the world, but I'm gonna put it in here. I'm gonna kind of drive along here, set my AB line, and pull into the field, take off. Okay, set my B line. Now I gotta find a gate I can fit through because I don't think I'm gonna fit through that guy. In case you ever wonder what the back side of the bin site looks like. So our sweet corn patch is inside of the corral. In case if you're wondering. All right, it's a new day here. We just got done planting this field. But we're just kind of uh, running the water over it to kind of seal in any gaps. It's a little damp when we put the seed in, but if you run a pivot over it, it usually takes care of any of those gaps. On this one, there's a dump valve and you can drain out. Sometimes the sand builds up over the year or over the years and you got to drain that out. But I got a broken off drop nozzle and I think that guy might be a little bit plugged still. And then I got a, a pivot boot, which is goes right there. It joins the towers together. It's a rubber gasket boot piece um, looks like I'm one two three four five maybe five five towers down so when I shut it off I'm gonna go over there and tighten that up and then it uh, should be good but I I gotta go find that oh he just got cleaned out there must have been something up in there you guys seen it here first I guess one of the concerns would be if I can screw something back up in there. Or well, if it broke off inside. Because that white, the only problem with these plastic drops is over the years, white plastic always gets brittle. I'll have to shut you guys off so I can shut this pivot off with my phone to see up in there. So give me a sec. Okay, hopefully this pivot shuts off in a second here. Okay, this is slightly concerning now too because what's happening is I shut the pivot off. That should kill the water. The pivot shut off, the movement, but the water's not shutting off, so there might be some kind of other problem. So I'm going to have to like the old days and actually shut it off at the well. Kind of interested to see where that's leaking at for sure. The only problem is to get to where I want to be I gotta I gotta get chilly. Cool. Oh. Not exactly sure what that's doing. Well, now it shut off. Not sure what that's all about. One thing I don't like about a valley is their boot system. Here's what we got. I, I just tightened this guy up right there. The thing leaking right now 
some of you asked this question, but what's this is a uh, I always have a mental block when I'm doing these things. It's a drain. It's a pressure drain anyway. Mid drain. Anyway, what this does when the pivot fills up with water, it'll actually seal back up so it's not leaking. But when the pressure's out of it, when the pivot shuts off, this releases a little gasket inside there that lets these uh, towers drain all the water out so you don't have to worry about them freezing up, or hopefully not worry about them freezing up on each of the sections that goes along here. But now it actually takes a little while for these to uh, completely drain out. So, is it okay if I film you now? Yeah. Okay. All right, we got the professional with us. Are you the professional? Yeah. What's a professional? <laughs> Sounds like a good, good response. What are we gonna go do? Put a, um, a thing on a packer shelf. Yeah, on, that's the pivot. All right. Can do I we tell have you the tools? I really want to be a farmer and a zookeeper. A zookeeper. 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 That sounds amazing. Okay. So it looks like. I can reuse this gooseneck. Gooseneck? That's what I call it. Is that silly? Why do you call it gooseneck? Well, because it's like... Looks like a gooseneck. Yeah, right? Kind of how you look like a clown. Do you look like a clown? <laughs> what, bud? Careful. What was that? Can I my own piano? Uh, maybe when you're older and a little crazier. I'm not crazy. Well, you probably shouldn't start a YouTube channel then. You gotta be slightly crazy to have a channel. Yeah, probably. Well, the way the sun is, you probably can't see the water pattern very well, but that is not a LDN or just a standard set. It's a different one. It's all I had on hand, so. But when I pull it back around over there, I'll be able to put the right one on. But at least this way it's not shooting right into the ground. Well, we got that done, so I might call this the end of this video, so. Thank you for watching, and we will catch you on the next one. Out.